In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to our worship from St. Michael and All Angels Barnes on this Mothering Sunday. And although we are unable to meet together in person, we celebrate this Mass by joining in wherever you are. And I encourage you, in your home, with anyone who may be around you, to stand, sit, kneel, respond and sing, just as you would do in church. For you are not just watching this service, but sharing in it. And so let us celebrate these sacred mysteries, praying for our church and its parish, and especially keeping in our prayers the effects of coronavirus upon individuals and nations, all the while still giving thanks for the loving motherhood as expressed through our parents, the church, through Our Lady Mary, the Mother of Christ. My friends, we meet again as God's family, and as we begin this Mass, let us tell God we are sorry for the things we have done wrong, and ask him to forgive us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, whose Son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth, and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. If we are being afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation. If we are being consoled, it is for your consolation, which you experience when you patiently endure the same sufferings that we are also suffering. Our hope for you is unshaken, for we know that as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our consolation. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is
is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So much has happened in just this last week, I hardly know where to begin. And it's at times like this that the words of the Bible and the liturgy, which can sometimes seem a bit remote, take on a new relevance and power. During this week at morning prayer, I was struck by a verse from Psalm 38, which said, My friends and companions stand apart from my affliction. My neighbours stand afar off. Which, in many ways, is quite literally true in the current crisis and our social distancing from one another. And the same might be said of our first reading today from 2 Corinthians, which speaks of the God of all consolation who consoles us in our affliction, so that we might be able to console those who are in any affliction. What St. Paul is saying here is that no matter how dark and unsettling the situation, there is consolation, because the Christian faith is about hope and joy. So on this Mothering Sunday, also known as Leitare, a word that means rejoice, because we are drawing closer to Easter, what are the signs of hope we might find in this difficult situation? The Archbishop of Canterbury said this week that this is when we really learn what it means to be a national church, a church for everyone. And it is at such times of crisis that we are called back to the things that really matter, to our priorities, our foundations, things of lasting value. And in a way, in the long run, that can only be a good for us as individuals and as a society. Another hope at this time is that it may help us to pray in a new way, and especially to pray at home, so that our faith may be strengthened in ourselves and among our families. Very often we feel shy or a bit embarrassed about bringing our faith out of the church and into our homes, but at times like this we can learn to pray more in the place that we live and among the people we love, and thereby build up our faith together. It breaks my heart, as I'm sure it does yours, that we cannot worship together. But I want you to know that you are being prayed for every day. And the church bell still rings out across the parish to tell you that this is happening. And you can see evidence of it online in our recorded services. And as a sign of that prayer, I want to ask something in particular of the children of the parish. I'd like to ask you to draw a picture of yourself and your family, take a photo of it, and send it to me by email so that I can remember you in my prayers. Another hope of this time may well be an increase in our devotion to the Eucharist. It is easy to take for granted what is normal. But when we can't receive the sacraments, then perhaps it reminds us what a great joy and privilege it is to do so. So that when we return and are able to receive again, we may be filled with a greater thankfulness for the wonderful gift that God has given to us. For that reason, the Blessed Sacrament will be placed on the altar of this church every Sunday, 
so that you may come and offer your praises to Christ in his sacramental presence. And don't forget that the church is open every day for you to pray and light a candle. And there are prayer leaflets here for you to use. But perhaps the most important sign of hope at this time is that we will learn to love one another more deeply and more fully. In the gospel today, we hear Jesus saying, Behold your mother and behold your son, as he speaks to Mary and John from the cross. He is commending them into the care of each other. And likewise, he says to us that we are to care for each other too. We are to be sources of consolation. Thank you to those of you who have already kindly volunteered your help for people in the community. And St. Michael's is preparing to work with various other organizations in Barnes to provide help for the vulnerable and the self-isolating. And over this coming week, it is our intention to deliver leaflets to every house in the parish with more information about this and what we are doing as a church at this time. None of this, of course, takes away from the seriousness of the current coronavirus crisis, which will likely get far more serious before it gets better and will change our lives even more in the coming months than it has done already. This is a time of challenge for us. It is a time when we must show what it truly means to be a Christian. For a period of time, we are now learning to be a different kind of church. And when we are once again able to come together, we will have been changed by that experience. There will be loss, there will be trauma and distress, but I am sure that there will be other things too. A deepening of faith, a furthering of hope, and an increase of love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the Church and for the world, and give thanks to God for his goodness to us. We pray for the Church. We pray for our Bishop Christopher and his assistant Richard. We pray for our Vicar Stephen and for all who minister here at St. Michael's. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the Church throughout the world, that she may continue to live and to share the good news of Christ during the coronavirus pandemic. May she offer hope and succour to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the world, we pray for all families, giving thanks for homes where love is found. We pray for all who may be cut off from those whom they love, 
because of forced isolation or travel restrictions. As Mary and Joseph gave a loving hope to Jesus, may all find love today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are alone. We pray for all who are ill and for those who care for them. In particular, we pray for those suffering from coronavirus, for those vulnerable to it, and for those living in fear. May the Lord give them hope and comfort them when in pain. And we pray by name for these from our own community. George Horseman, Anne Jones, Lorraine Tice, Francis Harmon, Rosalind Fletcher, Oscar Townsend, and John Duncan. And in a moment of silence, we pray for anyone else known to us to be suffering at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who have died. From our own community, we remember by name Robert Sample and Juliet Salomon. And those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time. Joan Waterhouse, Pamela Hoyer-Miller, Annie Jones, Charles Winter, Lionel West, Hilda Isles, Iris Hamilton, Mary Chandos, Peter Tilly, Richard Walpole, Sally MacDonald, Manfred Williams, B. Osborne, and Leslie Barber. And in a moment of silence, we pray for our departed relatives and friends. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the prophet Isaiah, God says, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave his thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Together with Justin, our Archbishop, Christopher, our Bishop, Richard, his assistants, all the clergy, and the entire people of God. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Michael the Archangel, Saint Joseph, and all the holy angels and saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Let us pray. Loving God, as a mother feeds her children at the breast, you feed us in this sacrament with the food and drink of eternal life. Help us, who have tasted your goodness, to grow in grace within the household of faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, it wouldn't be an Anglican service without the notices, and you should have received a pew sheet by email with many of the notices on it. But just a reminder, as I mentioned in the homily, that church is open every day for your own private and personal prayers, and that today, on Sunday, the Blessed Sacrament is on the altar for you to come and worship and adore. We will be requesting volunteers very shortly this coming week, both to help deliver leaflets and also to assist with the pastoral needs of the people of this community at this time. I've also been asked to mention that the Barnes Food Bank is looking for additional donations now, and there will be some boxes at the back of church where you can leave donations of food to be taken there. On a rather happier note, I have a, a present to offer to somebody, which Annie, who's our subdeacon today, um, is uh, presenting here. This is a gift which is for our director of music, Martin Neary, as he prepares to celebrate his birthday, I think this coming week. So we wish you, Martin, a very happy birthday. And as is customary at, the time, at this time, on this Mothering Sunday, I'm going to now bless some bunches of flowers, some of which will be handed out uh, to households in the parish, and some also will be left here in church for you to come and collect yourself this afternoon. So we're now going to pray and ask God to bless these flowers. Lord God, you love us with a mother's love. We ask you to bless these flowers. That they may be a sign of our care for one another in the church and through the mother of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we conclude our service with our final hymn.
हम लोग 